Welcome to today's quick edit. Today we're going to do something a little bit more abstract. I had my camera set up. Um, some of the pictures from last week, there were some hydrangeas in there. Uh, the color you see in the background here is, at, and some of the the white, pointing with my fingers is not very helpful to you. The white uh, blur over here from the bokeh and some of the colors, the, the little bit of changes of colors, those are from the hydrangea in the background. And I took off the silver band that I wear as my everyday wedding band and kind of held it up in the camera. My intention was to try and shoot through it, but I, I couldn't quite get that, or I didn't have the patience to do it. That, that was probably it. I was shooting with my A7R3 Sony and using the Sony G, the Sony 90 millimeter 2.8 G OSS macro lens that I've used an awful lot. I shot at ISO 320, 90 millimeters, of course, since it's a prime lens, f2.8, and one-sixth of a second, obviously on a tripod, as I said, for at one-sixth of a second. So my idea with this is there's some hints of purple and quite a bit of blue in here, and I just want to make this a really vibrant, um, really kind of abstract photo. So we are going... We, me, whatever. I'm going to leave the temperature here at 5250 in the white balance, but I am going to change my tint so we go more over to the magenta purple side here. You can see already that's bringing out the pinks a lot in there. I think my exposure, yeah, let's see what happens when I pop it up. Okay, I'll bring that up just a tiny bit. Let's see how one looks, then bring it down from there. Oh, that's too much. Let's try 0.6. Yeah, there we go. And then um, contrast. We're going to make the contrast way down. Well, not way, but down a little bit. To kind of emphasize the smoothness here in the background. For the highlights, let's see if anything's... It's blown a little bit right there. I don't know if that's a problem in an a abstract sort of thing. But let's try bringing him down a little bit. See how far we have to go to get rid of that. 55, that's a little much. I'm going to leave it, let it blow out a little bit and bring it up to down to 30. That still leaves it blown out quite a bit. I think it'll be okay. Shadows, I'm going to make them a lot brighter, which is probably, if I go and look, probably gonna blow out. No, it didn't blow out too much more. But it does bring out uh, the detail in between the different layers of the ring. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera. I'll leave it on my hand. You can, I don't know if that's gonna focus. It's got overlapping bits. Uh, I'm going to leave the whites where they are. Actually, turn this back on and see if we turn them down a little bit. What happens? Now I'm just going to leave them. And turn the blacks to negative four. Just a touch less black. More black. To make these lines here uh, crisper. Let's turn off the highlight. Okay, we're not going to do anything to the tone curve, although maybe, maybe if we take the highlights, oops, I keep going back and forth to that blonde, it's bugging me. But I don't really want to lose the brightness. And I don't want to isolate that area because I think it won't look right. I'll bring it down about 12 and not any more though. Okay, before I go into the hue, saturation, and luminance panel, I am going to come down and I want to split tone this. I'm going to take the hue to the lavender side and I, of course, bring up some saturation for that. So, that was a huge change, obviously. Oh, again, turn off that. And 
Oops. I'm going to bring my shadows. 193 and a saturation 32. There we go. And like I was talking about in the beginning, I really wanted to emphasize that blue and pink or magenta that I could really see in there. But I'm going to take my balance and make it a little off sided on the split toning so that the blue background is dominant there. All right, now we're going to go up here. I'm going to do my luminance before my saturation. It's sometimes my preference. I usually go back and forth. So you start with aqua. The other ones are really not much there. So I'm going to bring the aqua up quite a bit and the blue up a ton to 57 and the purple I'm going to bring the purple magenta up to emphasize these th those magentas. There we go. And in the saturation, I'm going to affect the exact same colors. You know what? I just followed my notes backwards. I'm going to change these again. I put in my saturation numbers for the luminance. That's why it doesn't look the way I expected it. 29 for the aqua, 45 for the blue. These are, I mean, they're not that far different. 32 for the purple, and 42 for the magenta, but there's a lot more to bring those up. Now we're going to bring in the saturation and do those numbers. 40 on the aqua, 57 on the blue. There we go. We've got the blue popping a lot the way I want it to. 25 on the purple and 35 on the magenta. There we go. So overall in the colors and the balance, I am happy with that. Let's go see again. Again, that highlight's bugging me. Let's go see now that we've got all of that done, what happens if we, we have the highlights at positive 30. No wonder. I wanted them at negative 30. No wonder it got so bright. Now they're still bright there, but not as bad as they were. I actually, yeah, let's make them a little less. Let's see what happens. And we can do things, because this is an abstract, we're not trying to maintain realism here. We can do things like put the shadows all the way up to 100, and it's really okay. I mean, this isn't... There's no really, nothing is sharp and focused. The whole idea of this is something unreal. We're going to bring the highlights where they're just starting to blow out. There we go. See what happens if we up the tone in them a little bit. All right, so I made a couple of adjustments down here in the tone curve, trying to adjust to, to keep it as bright as I can without having too much of that highlight blown out. So that is all I'm going to leave of the blown out highlight. There we go. And that's okay because it draws your eye there and that's where in the subject of the photo is. So I think that looks good that way. Now we're going to come down. Uh, of course, I'm using a lens with a built-in lens profile. So when I bring my raw photo into Lightroom, it automatically uh, adds the profile. If you don't have a profile in there, you can enable uh, profile corrections and you can tell it to remove chromatic aberration, which would probably be a bad thing in this photo because we've kind of purposely edited in a whole bunch of uh, aberration. All right, so for sharpening, I'm going to sharpen it just a little. Actually, I kind of want to mask that. So let's bring it back down just enough so it'll give me a mask. I'm going to push a 
hold the Alt key while I slide the masking. Here we go, I'm gonna slide it here so it just affects the ring on the right and the details on it. There we go. Then I'm gonna put this up to 40. Leave the detail at 50 there in the radius. Let's bring that up just a little bit too. So you can see what the, how that adjusts it. When you hold down the Alt key, I'm gonna slide that way over with the Alt key down. Again, it's a, a abstract photo. So some of the rules that we normally apply aren't really going to be there. If you hold the Alt key when you do the sharpening, it's taking you to black and white, kind of a um, high pass look. Giving a better idea, there we go. Uh, no noise reduction. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to give this a little bit of a vignette. So we're going to go to negative five. See, go dark, bright. We're using the negative five. Type it again because it's easier. Just to bring the focus inward a little bit. I'm going to have my midpoint at 50. my roundness at zero, but my feather at 50. So that brings it, it's not quite a circular one. And you can see that it's made the colors around the edges almost as if we've put a um, multiply filter over it. So I want to come in here, I want to adjust the colors even further. So the best way to do that, since we've already met all the adjustments in the hue saturation, luminance panel is to come in and adjust the calibration, which adjusts at the basic level how Lightroom is interpreting the colors straight out of the camera. So I'm going to adjust my shadows over towards the magenta quite a bit. There, it's about halfway on the line or the magenta portion. I'm going to leave the red primaries alone. On the green, I'm going to bring down the saturation of the green. There's not really a lot of green here, but I want to make sure if there is any that I've removed the majority of it. So it's not a huge difference, but I, I think it makes the blues and the reds a bit cleaner. And in the blues, I'm going to change both the hue to make it a deeper blue and the saturation to bring in more of the blue. So there we go, that's it. I'm all done with this photo. Thank you for joining me. Every day, I share a new photo on Instagram, Patreon, and my website. On Instagram, I share the Instagram ratio cropped image. On Patreon, I share the uncropped image, and my patrons can download either the web resolution or the full high resolution image every day, along with a weekly Lightroom preset based on one of the week's daily photos. Prints are available on my website at terrymcclary.com. Patreon supporters can also get discount codes to use on prints. Every day, I also post a quick edit video here on YouTube where I edit the photo of the day. To get the daily quick edit video in your YouTube feed, make sure to subscribe. If you already subscribe, ring the bell down below to get notifications when new videos are posted.